This short presentation will deal with whether or not the Karoo should be restored to its pre-human state. Please enjoy. The Karoo is a semi-desert region in South Africa. The area roughly covers over 400,000 square kilometers of South Africa's Cape region. However, due to constant debate over what exactly constitutes Karoo, this number often changes dramatically. The Karoo also includes the biome referred to as the succulent Karoo. It forms an eco-region which has been designated as a biodiversity hotspot due to it harboring a massive amount of succulent plant species, roughly a third of the world population. The biome harbors approximately 630 species of geophytes which dominate the flora abundance of the area as well as large amounts of endemic fauna. These include amphibian, scorpion, reptile and beetle species. The region conditions are greatly affected by the presence of the coal Benguela current, which creates relatively dry conditions contributing to the arid climate of the area. Due to the harsh conditions within the Little and Great Karoo, which are the two regions the Karoo is split into, human settlement was not easy. Those indigenous to the area were known as Khoisan. The Khoisan had molded their entire lifestyle to surviving in this desert area and were very successful in living off the land. Initial European attempts to settle in the Karoo were unsuccessful due to harsh conditions such as lack of water, massive day and night temperature variations and so forth. Initial settlement around the 1700s by the Europeans resulted in a nomadic existence with great hardships. The development of the multiple bladed wind pump in the late 1800s greatly advanced settlement within the Karoo and aided human development in the region. Whether or not the presence of humans in the Karoo is good or bad is often debated, along with whether or not the area should be conserved or restored back to its pre-human state. Despite the massive biodiversity in the area and ecological value, systems and facilities have only been put in place for the sake of conservation in recent years to attempt to protect the environment from negative human impact. Certain activities such as mining, poor management of tourism, and unsustainable farming techniques have harmed the environment over the years. However, the relatively small amount of human settlement has minimized the damage created by anthropogenic effects and maintained the unique biodiversity of the environment. So, we have to ask the question, is this harsh environment worth restoring? Or should it just be left as is because the damage is insignificant? Despite being harsh and relatively unproductive, the Karoo has supported plant, animal and human populations for thousands of years and to this day continues to be a source of meat, plants, etc. for those which inhabit the region. The Karoo contains within it a large amount of South Africa's indigenous human culture due to their ways of life, separate from modern human lifestyles, being shaped by the environment in which they have lived for many centuries. Knowledge of plants with medicinal value Sustainable and traditional hunting methods and insight into the workings of the landscape would be lost if degradation continued beyond an irreparable point. The presence of human settlements within the Karoo inevitably brought with it farms and agricultural activities which have upset the natural balance within the areas these settlements were situated in. Fencing, being one of these activities, restricts movements of grazers resulting in overgrazing by game and livestock along with the trampling by farmed animals such as ostriches. This overgrazing resulted in and continues to result in palatable plants being wiped out in certain areas and replaced with non-productive weeds which do not provide any sustenance to humans and other fauna within these areas. Examples of species that have been negatively affected by human activity in the Karoo include the famous quagga, which became extinct due to hunting by settlers and competition with farm animals for food. Tourism has also had a negative effect on the Karoo biology in recent years. While increased awareness about the importance of the Karoo could be seen as a pro, the increased presence of vehicles and makeshift roads leaves in its wake trampled fauna and flora which remains many years after these areas have ceased to be in use. In terms of minerals and resources for energy such as gas, 
diamonds, titanium, etc. The Karoo landscape holds a greater than expected potential for highly profitable primary activities. These activities pose a gigantic threat to the sensitive biology of the Karoo, including the seemingly harmless prospecting for these resources. One such imminent threat is the prospect of hydraulic fracking within the Karoo for the extraction of shale gas to be used as an energy source. Now one cannot argue that this will provide jobs, resources and to a certain extent infrastructure into the Karoo communities. However, these are short term benefits in exchange for irreparable damage to the sensitive area. As time goes on, the use of the Karoo will continue to increase due to the growing human populations which require more energy and resources. This use of the Karoo as a resource will inevitably create job opportunities for those involved and beyond. However, unsustainable use will render this resource barren in fairly short amounts of time, resulting in those opportunities disappearing along with the biodiversity of this unique region. A better situation would be sustainable use of the resources within the Karoo, which would create similar amounts of opportunities and jobs if not more, while still preserving the Karoo for the generations succeeding us. Restoration of the damaged areas of the Karoo would greatly aid this cause while educating and spreading awareness regarding the importance of South Africa's Karoo region and biomes. Restoration of any natural system to a pre-human state is, realistically, not a simple task due to complexities of ecosystems and our lack of knowledge regarding the pre-human state of anything. This does not mean that restoration in general should be abandoned due to it being a powerful conservation tool capable of supporting human activities while protecting the environment. Fortunately, the Karoo has not been affected too badly due to its harsh environment preventing many activities. Current and future restoration of the region, not necessarily to a pre-human state, is vital to protecting it from current and future threats and should be prioritized for the sake of saving our unique and beautiful landscape. Well guys, I hope this presentation has helped you learn something new and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.